What's up guys? So this is my side deck tier list post 250 FYCS. I do need to clean this list up a bit because there's some old things that shouldn't still be here. Um, but yeah, so to start off with Lancia, Lancia was not relevant and I still think it's not going to be that relevant unfortunately because it just it's a bit too slow, I would say. Well, I don't know if slow is the right word, but essentially it doesn't always stop Kashtera. It's annoying to Runic, but they can also play in your turn. It stops one thing from Sprite. I mean, it, should, it doesn't stop enough things to be relevant, and so that's why we're not seeing it. Um, Dark Rune No More was an S-tier hand trap, and I would say it's or S-tier side deck card, and I'd say it was even good enough to be in a lot of people's main decks. It was a correct read to have in your main deck for YCS 250. So if you did, good job, and I think it will be good moving forward, just because it does sometimes answer the whole Sprite board. It's not terrible against Kashtera. It's not terrible against Branded. Like, there's no matchup where I'd say it's super, super bad, and maybe, I don't know, maybe, I don't know, like labyrinth but not many people are playing that but most matchups it's at least okay in and some matchups it's just super in so yeah definitely a very good card dd crow was okay but not well enough to play i wouldn't like say main deck it uh yeah i'd say maybe side deck it if you really need it but this deals were good if you needed that kind of removal because i don't think there's non in any dark non-dark light decks that you really need it for nightling storm was a to str the thing is Back row decks do have ways of playing around this and a lot of people playing sprite and kashtiras do put stuff in defense but it doesn't make Lightning Storm bad. It still is a blowout sometimes. And just having that ability to sometimes just wreck every card your opponent has and swing that punch is just huge if they don't play around it. So yeah, very, very good card. Denko, unfortunately, probably low C. I'd even say D tier just because, again, people weren't playing back row decks as much. So it's not that the card's bad. Uh, maybe I'll say C tier where it's like, Denko wasn't bad and it isn't bad, but people just aren't playing those back row decks as much. Panktops, it's just, it's at one, so it's inconsistent. That's the biggest problem with it. It's not bad, it's just... Yeah, you, you can't really build strategy around it. Cyclone was another S tier. You just had to play it right now. Um, yeah, there's just too many decks that are doing stuff with some sort of back row card, so you needed Cyclones in your side deck, especially Runic. Anti-Spell, very good as well. Um, the thing about Anti-Spell that's so frustrating is, again, there's so many power going second cards, and you'll see as I do this list, there's so many power going second spells that if you don't have a way to kind of just blanket stop all of them, you just kind of get rolled sometimes going second. It's really, really frustrating, as that's why it's so necessary, but very good card. Point is okay. It, yeah, not bad. It's always a pretty good card. Alpha, I would say it's not amazing right now. Um, it does have some interesting applications against decks like Cash, but essentially no deck really cares about its attribute. It wasn't like in Lyra Lush Tri Brigade 4, for example, where that deck cared about its attribute. Um, no one really cares that it's an Earth Beast. There's no real rank 8 spam decks, and so it's not amazing. I have just this irrelevant. Kaijus are A tier right now. I won't say they're S tier, but Kaijus are definitely very good if your deck can play them. I would say that... So if you're playing like a Cyber deck or something that can search the Kaiju out, this is very good. Kaijus are S tier. If you're playing another deck, they're like A tier, um, just because they do out some threats really nicely. However, what I would say is that most of the decks that are putting up some sort of towers aren't really relevant enough that you need to focus on them and Kashtira specifically because a lot of people playing Kashtira's for Kaijus while Kaijus are nice against Kashtira again if you can't search out that Kaiju I wouldn't say it's like an amazing side like there are better ways to deal with Rise Heart than a Kaiju in my opinion or more efficient ways to deal with it anyway I think Prelin not relevant which is not good this format Phantasme has not been relevant for a long time White Howling's an okay card, but I wouldn't personally play it specifically this format. Same with Blizzard. There's there's spells to dodge, but the problem with both of these cards is that the only water deck that would realistically be playing this right now is Marincess, and so yeah, Marincess has better ways. Just play anti spells better. Um, and then Blizzard only stops one card, which isn't enough. Contact C is good, I would say, actually, right now. I'd say it's high BTR. Um, the thing is, you have to play Contact C in a weird way to make it good, but it is okay against Kashtira, it is okay against Branded, and having that potential is great. Warning Point just never took off, so yeah, I'm going to remove this soon. <laughs> Order is banned, so that needs to be removed. Gao is irrelevant, it's just Compulse. Necro Valley is not good at the moment, just because there's not enough deck um, back row decks. Shared Ride, I think, is an undiscovered good card. I think a lot of decks could play this now the reason why a lot of decks don't like playing this is because it doesn't really do anything by itself um it does kind of just let you draw into more cards but i do think certain decks like math mech certain decks like cash Tira, that are going to be doing some form of one card combo and then draw a bunch of hand traps will work with this and if for example cash Tira is going to search loads of times in their turn runic is going to search loads of times in their turn there's loads of decks right now that are search loads and that shared ride especially if you're going first, can be a big problem for them and really stunt their plays. Crossout is high A tier, if not S tier right now, just because 
there are a lot of specific cards that this can stop and this is the only way to stop certain cards or or one of the few ways to stop certain cards like dark reader which is nice rivalry is a very very good side deck card right now so i was playing rivalry in the main deck a few people were playing cards like rivalry in the main deck and um, for example Spreenic sprite folds to this card a lot of the time if they don't see their spell and trap destruction quick enough cashier it does frustrate and slow them down especially if they expended battle phase um yeah rivalry is just a very very good card right now and i do think it should be in a lot of decks uh, card side decks the problem with Soul, Mind Drain, or whichever one this is, I think this is Hand or Banished. There's just not enough effects activating there right now, which makes it relevant. Skill Drain is better, but still not great. Um, yeah, it's okay. Token Collector, I would say, is mediocre. Um, there's not enough token generating decks in the format to make it relevant. Summon Element is always going to be a good sideboard card but it depends on the kind of deck you're playing ddg is kind of redundant right now because if you want to play ddg just play kashtira twin twister is okay twin twister i'd say is low ctr um the problem is there's a lot of back row protection so if i'm going to play a card like twin twister i'd rather play lightning storm which will destroy everything because i don't want to discard one just for it to not resolve um Supoly is good if you can play it if you're playing something like branded Supoly is actually really great because there's just a lot of targets for it right now um but if you're not then pff. eradicate is a must play if there's any way your deck can play it eradicate is just a very it's anti-spell but better because it's, it's ripping the cards from your hands as opposed to stopping your opponent activating them so eradicate is very very good however not every deck can play it but if you can play it it's a must play um solemn's always going to be okay Droll is another STR. I think this should be in your main or side deck for everyone right now. There's just so many decks that just search and search and search and draw and draw and draw. And without Droll, you get rattled sometimes, which is really, really frustrating. So definitely think Droll is very good. Evenly is S. It's weird. So Evenly, I'm going to leave it in STR. But the thing about Evenly that's weird is that it, it's not as good as it used to be. Because if Evenly, you're say, actually saying, I'm not killing you this turn. And right now, we're at the point where if I'm stopping you, I need to kill you next turn because a lot of decks you stop them or you out their board and they just rebuild it next turn like Kashira for example one card rebuild the whole board runic get one or two cards rebuild the whole board sprite one or two cards rebuild the whole board and so that's my problem with evenly it's good in some game states it will be great but because it doesn't win the game that turn it does cause a problem i would say it's it's not ideal joshua schmidt had a really interesting thought experiment where he was like he wanted to see how many games that you resolve evenly that you actually win and he was saying he bets it's actually quite low and i agree i i think a lot of times you resolve evenly and it doesn't matter because your opponent just rebuilds the board anyway but sometimes it is great sometimes it is great and and i would say it's probably like for example if you have like evenly dark Reed, it's amazing evenly is really good in conjunction with other board breakers as well like you bait out on the gate and then evenly the whole board which is great Talents and Thrust are both very good, but I'll say they're ATR. They're, they're really good against Kashtira. They're okay against most other things, I would say. They're not perfect. Droplets is uh, it's meh. It has potential, but Kashtira being in the format does hold it back. Dust is ATR. Silent Graveyard is relevant because not, not enough things happen in the graveyard. Lava Golem is another STR, like... And, and as you can see, this is what I'm saying. This is what's really interesting about this format as I'm going through this. As you see, there are so many, like, must-haves in your side deck. Everything in STA is like a... If you can play three, play three. Um, because it's so good. At, like, there's so many cards right now that are just so good as, like, go as like um side deck or board-breaking cards. Uh, and it just makes this format kind of frustrating to deal with. Because it basically means the best deck is the deck that can play the most of these cards the most efficiently. As opposed to the deck with the best engine. But yeah, Gamma's another STR. Um, yeah, Gamma's just very, very good. A lot of people are main-decking it because it's just very good against loads of things. And it's one of the cards that actually outs or rise hot quite easily. Um, then Skullmeister. Skullmeister's mediocre, unfortunately. I think the biggest problem is, again, it's just not a graveyard format, so it's not relevant. Solemn Judgment is a high A tier card. It's a double edged sword where it's like, Solemn Judgment has the ability, obviously, to essentially say no to anything, but it reduces your life points to 4,000. And that's dangerous right now, especially with time rules as well. So, so yeah, that's the problem with Solemn Judgment. But it is a good card. Swim Mode is worse than Lava Golem, but still good. Bozo Match is worse than Rivalry, but still good. So we were seeing some people play Forbidden Chalice and Forbidden Lance and stuff before in Kashtira. I'm seeing I feel like we're seeing a lot less of that now. They're not terrible, but I'd say they're not amazing. They're, they're okay. Um I, I'd say the biggest thing as well is that we're seeing a lot of spell trap hate. We're seeing a lot of maturity runic, so you don't really want to get caught slipping with a bunch of spells in your hand. Um then D barrier, D barrier is high ATR. The thing is branded isn't as popular as before, and this doesn't stun all of the top decks, but it's good enough that it will stun certain matchups. So if branded is a hard matchup for you might as well play d barrier or play super ancient organism that's just as good then shifter shifter is high a tier as well if you can play shifter play it if you can play shifter it will just win certain matchups for you for free however 
a lot of decks can't play Shifter, which is the problem with it. Um, Nibiru is S tier in the context of tournaments, and it will, I think Nibiru will probably stay S tier for a long time. The thing about Nibiru is that every single YCS, and it was something I noticed, it was the same with Mystic Mind, people just don't respect it. They never respect it in big tournaments, and so it ends up being good. Um, so I would say Nibiru is just a kind of it's a mainstay. If you can play it, play it. If you can't, that's okay. Like it's not the end of the world, but it's a very very good card. Go spell high A tier just because there's a lot of graveyard shenanigans like expulsion stuff that you do need to play around. Zombie World's not relevant right now. There's no type locked decks as well that we need to care about at the moment. Mistaken Arrest has potential. Um, people aren't really looking at. I'd say it's a, a part of the problem with Mistaken Arrest is the spell thing, and then it's draws a good card when your opponent's not expecting it. Um, or when your opponent's already in their combo and stuff, but I don't want to dedicate three slots in my extra deck to a card that's good against some decks sometimes. That's the problem. Like, Kashira doesn't always lose to draw, for example. That That's a really good example, in my opinion. So it's like, that's why you don't really want to play a card like Mistaken Arrest. Muradora never came up. Look, I'm going to put Kurakara as low A tier. It's a good card. However, I do think... The problem is that it's only really good against Kashira. It's not great against everything else. And it's just because Kashira is so good. That's why it did so well. Um, so it's not a bad card. If you have room for it, definitely play it. But I would say that it's... it's it's Don't expect it to do anything amazing in a matchup that's not Kashira. It'll be okay in other matchups. Um, Spellbound just never came up. I thought it had potential. It never came up. Thrust is just the better talents. Yeah, it's just a slightly bad talents. Again, very good against Kashira. A little bit okay against everything else because it does have the potential to get you to anything in your deck. But it's people are finding more and more ways to play around cards like this. And again, with cards like Nat Beast in the format, a lot of these spells end up being worse because it's like you can just get rattled out of the game by a Nat Beast. Change of heart. Same, same as all the other spell ones. Chaos Hunter is just a bit irrelevant because you have to discard a card. So you're throwing away a card to stop your opponent banishing. And then they just out this anyway. Um... Then sort of conceding light. So we've seen that pretty much drop off. And I think a big part of the thing as well is, is speed. Um, Book of Moon and Book of Eclipse are quick plays, which makes them just better in most scenarios, especially because you use them on your turn to dodge things as well. Um, Souls of Conceding Light doesn't have that advantage, which is a bit of a shame. Now, Book of Eclipse is interesting. So there's the Book of Moon, Book of Eclipse debate. I would say Book of Moon is definitely better and will probably be A tier. Book of Eclipse is, de is B tier unless you're playing like a Link deck. And that's because flipping two problems of Book of Eclipse is that it flips your own monsters, obviously. And then also in the end phase, it gives them draws. Those two things put together, I think, hold it back a lot and make it not as good as it could be because it's like you're just creating issues for yourself that you don't need with Book of Eclipse, unfortunately. So it's a good card, but not as good as before. And then lastly, time cards. S tier. Time cards will always be some sort of S tier. You need time cards. Even in this format, where games are a little bit faster than before, you still need some sort of time card just because that's how it always is in tournaments. You are going to get slow played. You are going to get to game freeze that you can't win without gaining life points or burning life points. So time cards are definitely a thing. But guys, that is my side deck tier list. Thank you all for watching. I'll talk to you all soon. Peace.